<laughs> Wide receivers, we're starting with Odell Beckham, who we've been talking about the last couple weeks simply because he looks like vintage Odell Beckham. In Jay's words, it looks like he has a Giants jersey on out there. Available in 58% of leagues, he's got Jacksonville here on Sunday Night Football. Week 14 against the Rams, 10 targets, only caught four of them, but it doesn't matter because it, he went for 97 yards and made that great adjustment down the field, Jay. Uh, Beckham just he looks healthy finally and there's a real connection here with Lamar. He does. There was a little concern about the shoulder injury against Cincinnati a few weeks ago, but that seems to have been dispelled. I think the key here is that Lamar Jackson is just chucking it down the field. Like he's yeah. launching it. Uh, average depth of target over 12 yards against the Rams. Now he gets a very favorable matchup against the Jacksonville defense that has been shredded by Jake Browning and Joe Flacco. And now it's Lamar Jackson coming into town. So uh, I think Odell should be rostered everywhere. To your point, over the last four weeks, the Jags allowed the second most yards per game to wide receivers. And since week nine, Odell Beckham Jr. is averaging 13 and a half fantasy points per game. Uh, he's you know, he's had at least uh, at least five receptions of 20 or more yards in each of his last three games. To your point about them chucking it down the field, like those are some stats that back up exactly what you're saying here. Lamar looks great. And clearly, you know, in a game in which they needed to, you know, it was the first game all season that Ravens were down in the third quarter, like right after the third quarter, like they were throwing and like it was kind of, I don't want to say seasons on the line, but like it was an important game yeah. for the Ravens to win. And they kept looking for OBJ, 10 targets last week. That's a season high for him. So he's our number one wide receiver pickup if he's out there in your league. Yep. All right, let's look at Barry's week 15 top wide receiver wa waiver targets, including Odell Beckham at the top, of course, but followed by Josh Downs, Curtis Samuel, Zay Jones. Joshua Palmer, who we'll spend more time on in just one second. Jonathan Mingo, who is just a staple of the show at this point. Wandell Robinson, who looked really good last night, and Cedric Wilson. Barry, I want to get to Joshua Palmer because he's been on IR. He was estimated to have a full practice on Monday after he's missed the last six games with the knee injury. The good news is he's got Vegas. The bad news is it's a short week and it's going to be the Easton Stick experience. Yeah, but they're going to sh they're, like the Raiders actually have uh, a pretty good run defense. Over the last month, the Raiders are a top ten run defense, right? And so Eckler, I know he was a little bit better last week, but it's been a tough run here for Eckler during this season. And I don't think he's 100% healthy, Austin Eckler. Just from what I I don't know anything. I'm just saying like it just. From the eye test, he doesn't look like the Austin Eckler we've seen uh, previously. So I think they're going to have to let Easton Stick sling it a little bit. Uh, and so Josh Palmer, who in his four healthy games prior to injury, was averaging 13.4 fantasy points per game. Really, no one has emerged other than Keenan Allen. Like, I know Quentin Johnson got the one big play last week, but really it's, it's kind of been – mix and match and hope and you know there hasn't been a lot of consistency outside of Keenan Allen in that passing attack for the Chargers so I could think Josh, Josh Palmer who's a veteran who's been in that system for a while could suddenly see a decent amount of uh, volume here he's a talented player too yep there's just no other human beings on this team right. like it's just uh necessity is the mother of invention here and look Keenan Allen's on pace to break the Chargers all-time receptions record and that's kind of a reflection Oh, he already has broken it this season, so, so it's insane. Like, and I'm just throwing this out there. So Keenan Allen, one of the toughest dudes in the NFL, no doubt, but he's, he's, he said he's playing with an AC okay. joint sprain, right? And I think he has a heel. So, lots going on. If they're shutting down Justin Herbert for the year, yeah. and it's clear the Chargers aren't making the playoffs. I know they haven't met math mathematically eliminated, right. but, like, they're out. They're out, yeah. right? And I the mean, staff like, won't be back. The, the, right? I mean, exactly. I mean, like, why are you – if now that Allen's gotten that record, like if you're Keenan Allen, if you're the Chargers front office, why are you playing him? Brandon Staley needs to save his job for right. a couple of uh, feel-good wins. Yes, I, I, I don't think there's anything, I mean, <laughs> Staley can do to save his job, candidly. But um, I don't know. I just, if I had Keenan Allen, I might be a little bit nervous. I'm not saying he's not playing, that Keenan Allen's not playing Thursday. I think he does play Thursday. But I'm just saying, like, as we get further down the, you know, like, yeah, I wouldn't this be is, surprised. This is a guy if, that's not 100% healthy. He's he's a wide receiver on the other age of 30. Like A report could pop up any time that Kane Allen's been, he's out for the season. I wouldn't be surprised. Right. And then at that point, Josh Palmer's a wide receiver one on an NFL team. And that is where I was leading. Thank yeah. you, Jake Crouch. No exactly. worries, Matthew Barry. That's what Jake Browning does. It's exactly right. You're a competent backup. You also saw Wondell Robinson on that list at number seven. He's available in 91% of leagues. Really nice game on Monday Night Football against the Packers. Wondell, six catches, 79 yards. Also involved in the running game. We know what kind of gadget player he is. Two carries for 36 yards. And Jay, 
The most important thing is DeVito just looks comfortable going Wandale's way out of the slot. He certainly does. The first pass that we showed uh, down the left sideline, I'm not sure that was the right throw to make, but it got there in the end. The second one, that was absolutely the throw to make. It effectively won them the game. I don't really understand this Giants passing offense, and Jalen Hyatt is a monster. A week ago, last night, he's 2 for 13, but Wandale, I mean, he's got the talent. He's coming off the ACL. He looks fully healthy, 100%. And Tommy DeVito, he showed a certain a raised floor for what he can do for a passing offense last night. Um, hey, look, I have long been obsessed with Wondell Robinson. I, like, I've talked about him a lot. Like, again, he, they used a second-round pick on him. Joe Shane and Brian Dable used a second-round pick on Wondell Robinson. Like, a lot of these guys, Jalen Hyde, obviously, they drafted this year. But a lot of these guys, they sort of inherited, and they're trying to do it. But Wondell Robinson's somebody they went out and actually actively drafted when they had Kadarius Tony, who was in some ways a similar player on their roster. Yeah. And obviously they got rid of Kadarius Tony. I wonder why. Uh, but they like Wandell Robinson there in New York, and we've just sort of been waiting for this. We've been waiting for the breakup. I feel like breakout. I've been I feel like I've been talking about him honestly, all off and on all season. I definitely didn't talk about him before last night. I'm not claiming that I did. Um, uh, you know, we were sort of like, ah, we'll see what happens here. But like. I guess my point is, is I don't think it's a fluke in the sense that I think the kid's talented and I know they like him. And it felt like they're trying to feature him a little bit more. Over the last two games that we've seen Wando Robinson play, he's got a 27% target share. And maybe some of that is day ball, some of that's health, some of that's John, Tommy DeVito. But, like, Wando Robinson kind of becoming a thing here for a – competent passing attack in New York. Yep, New Orleans, Philadelphia, Rams, Philadelphia. That's the close. None of those pass defenses are intimidating. Especially the against the slot. Philadelphia yep. especially, yep. that's where you love to attack the Eagles. The final player there, Cedric Wilson. You see him. We'll talk more when we recap Monday Night Football. Obviously, a lot of his usage is dependent on the status of Tyree Kill going into the Jets game. Yeah, but when Tyree Kill, we'll talk about this more, but when, you know, when Hill went out, Wilson was clearly the guy that sort of went in to replace him. Last one there, so you go OBJ, for people that are just listening, OBJ, Josh Palmer, Josh Downs, Curtis Samuel, Zay Jones, Jonathan Mingo is his name-o. You should try that with your daughters. Do a little... Lich that no? Yeah, and M-I-N-G-O, 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 Mingo is his name-o. Okay, yeah, and I'll take that advice on board. his under-receiving prop is the game-o? Yes, yes, exactly. There you go. Come on! Yeah, that's why Connor's a starter. That is why, over there. Uh, and then, uh, then of course, Wandell Robinson and Cedric Wilson. The one last thing I want to just mention here is Zay Jones, and not because uh, of, I mean, like we, we love Zay Jones. He's available in 71% uh, of leagues, but Zay Jones reminds me of Zay Flowers as we head to – we're going to quarterbacks, right? Yes, we are going to So, Zay Jones reminds me of Zay Flowers, who plays for Baltimore, and Zay Jones actually plays against Baltimore this week. Well, big breaking news. Pete, you got to carve out 10 minutes for us. But um, <laughs> Good luck, Pete. Uh, for this, uh, the Ravens are signing Malik Cunningham off the Patriots practice squad wow. and onto their roster. Stealthy. Quarterback controversy? Cor yeah, I mean, like, just, Lamar. you know, right. Yeah. Is Lamar definitely the starter? <laughs> Is he playing for people his job are, this people week? People are wondering. So, I, I'm not saying it. Some people are saying. The mainstream media doesn't want you to know that Malik Cunningham was, uh, you know, uh, Hasn't happened held back in New England. No. It felt like when it was you, going to. And now when you sign him from a practice squad to an active roster, he's going to be around for a couple of games. Yeah. That's the but that's a here, that is a weird one, right? Yeah. Like, I wonder if they feel like. Different role. I don't think no, it's to be a quarterback. <laughs> is it not? I mean, I was going to say. That's my think, guess. Do you think it's like it's something with Huntley or is it like quarterback maybe. depth or like, you know, or maybe, yeah, maybe it is, you know, some sort of Special gadget role. Special teams yeah. and a backup But they're role signing him to the roster. So. It feels big, like uh, we'll, we'll get into we'll get into quarterbacks, and um, we are not recommending you pick up Bailey Zappi, but it does feel like Bailey Zappi's earned some more uh, job security. Don't bring down his neck anymore. Well, I mean, he led the team to a victory last week. He certainly Nobly did. Nobly Cunningham, Mac Jones has been benched. It's all coming up, Bailey Zappi. Welcome Zappy to the Zappi, Zappi Hour, hour of course. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and RotorWorld.com, and I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched, or if nothing else being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully, respectfully now, okay, I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own fantasy football happy hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.